Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is not the 13th video of my main quest series for Fallout 76. And that's because we are too low level. Uh, now, I did just try to create this video, and I got about 15 minutes into it before I realized that the stuttering issue was becoming more and more severe. I think I may have fixed that, although it's resulted in some screen tearing and that I've turned off uh, V-Sync, which, yeah, I'm definitely getting some screen tearing going on, but at the same time, it's not losing, like, 60 frames at times. Uh, which is definitely something I was uh, experiencing when I was trying to record this video just a minute ago. Uh, so here we are at the Pleasant Valley Station, which, uh, well, we're here in part because this is where we uh, ended last time, right up here, getting to the Raiders Cache. Uh, but also because after I tried to do the last video, I brought us back up here just so there'd be a sense of continuity. So, And I just noticed this as well, where this clock is upside down. Which <laughs> I was looking at this because I actually had specifically been looking at the clock. Uh, in a different area, trying to figure out when exactly the bombs hit here in West Virginia. And I was like, that is completely off. And for a minute, I thought maybe the clocks were working properly, and then I realized the thing's just completely upside down. So, anyway. Um, so, yeah, we've got the new Raider Power Armor suit. And uh, we need to get some more fusion cores, which I think I've got, yeah, I got some in my stash. So, ammunition. And I still can't reach the right side of my screen. I don't know what that bug's all about, but. It's all right, because we can just do this. No, I don't need, there we go. Okay, nope, still can't reach the far side, but that's fine. Got another fusion core, and I need to eat something. Let's see what we got in terms of food. Honey, that works a little bit. Let's see if there's any actual food. A lot of spoiled meat. Okay, let's see if there's anything in here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Canned dog food. I don't have the perk, but it still works. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't think of a reason why I would need to eat eight cans of dog food in a day. And this is assuming that I would ever eat dog food. But let's say that I would. I can't imagine being so hungry that I would need to eat eight full cans of dog food. I think that there's a little bit of something broken in the survival system. But anyway, okay. Uh, so, rather than doing the main quest because we need to level up, we're going to follow the Overseer's Logs. Uh, and uh, so, uh, basically following her path. Well, partly her path because it's kind of... Uh, I just noticed that. Uh, anyway, uh, the way that <laughs> there's that nice... Uh, square corner right there but anyway uh so she leaves behind logs at the main quest sites so you'll find one here at the top of the top of the world and you'll find one uh you know at the missile silos and stuff like that uh but she also leaves them behind in other areas but those are her personal logs so if we go over here to the hollow tapes we find overseer's uh, log but we also find overseer's journal and we already have the first three but in case you missed them, or if you're just following this quest specifically, we're going to go after all of them uh, in order. Which means that we're going to be going first to the vault Agricultural Research Center. And, uh, oh, but first I need to level up, because in that last little 15 minutes where I tried to make this video before, I leveled up. Let's see if there's anything lockpicking or hacking related. No. Uh, let's see. How about luck? I could really use more ammunition. I've just been finding it that uh, ammunition seems to be getting rarer and rarer in the game, even when you have the scrounger perk, so uh, I'm going to be trying to get that upgraded. Okay, I'm really not enjoying this thing where I'm not allowed to touch the right side of the screen. And I'm sure that I just did something stupid, but uh, anyway. Okay, so I actually have full scrounger now. And serendipity, okay. And let's see, right on over to the vault Tech Agricultural Research Center near Flatwoods. Okay, here we are. Uh, it used to be the case, at least as far as I know, that when the event Fertile Soil was not taking place, that these bots would not attack you, but that has not been what my experience has been lately, so... We'll just start taking these guys out. Oh, that was way off. That seems like that should have hit, but whatever. Okay. Wow. Okay, there we go. 
Takes care of that, and we can head on inside now. Definitely getting some screen tear, and I'm gonna have to find some other fix for this, but I had to do this as at least a temporary fix because it was it was unusable the footage I was creating. All right, oh, look at that Nuka Cola Quantum, and a cherry and a Nuka Cola. Very nice. All right, and the first log. Okay, that was weird. It just stopped on its own. Overseers. Let's call these personal journals. Not an official log, just something from me. The Agricultural Center. One of my first posts with Vault Tech. I was so excited because I used to come to this same farm when I was a kid. <sighs> I remember one year at the Autumn Festival. Me running through the corn maze, going every which way, mom and dad yelling after me to slow down. <laughs> Wasn't gonna happen. I guess I was always hitting my fast. Couldn't just be a pioneer scout, I had to make troop leader. Couldn't just be a good student. I had to have straight A's. God, I miss those early days. Being a kid, the three of us are simple life. Simple house. I wonder if it's still standing. All right. Uh, while we're here, we may as well just uh, take a look at what else is going on here. Okay, so this is the log of a guy named McFadden. Uh, he has a wife named Marjorie. And uh, they were living on a farm. He came here and he was trying to get this place up and running. We can take a look at his logs. So, this is from uh, 2093, April 3rd. Facility's all busted. Tried restarting the generator, but Fusion Core spent. Every able bodied soul is busy fighting, not growing crops. The people need this. From July 19th of 2093. Responders came through with the Fusion Core, plugged it in, and the whole place lit up. What a sight, but all the farmhands are hunks of metal. January 1st of 2094. We lost a battle near Grafton. <laughs> Gotta get the farming up before it's too late. People are starving out there. Got one farmhand online, all the VT terminals are fried. Having to try to figure it out on my own. June 12th, 94. Success! The whole fleet of Mr. Farmhands are up and idling, but they won't move. Just got their vocal circuits back online. Keep complaining about fertilizer. Just plant the seeds. Any yield at all is better than nothing. November 11th of 2094. Got into the central memory thing for the farmhands. Running out of options. I'm not a robot tech, so I'm doing the best I can. I haven't heard from anybody, not even Marge. But if anyone's out there, they'll need food. Just got access to the core settings. I'll fiddle with the fertilizer settings. Maybe if I set it to zero, they'll just start planting. All right, and we found uh, this note here. Note to Marge. Marge, I miss you and the boys more than life. Don't think I'm a coward. I'm using what God gave me to help in the only way I can. This agricultural center is a chance to feed all the people. I'll get it done. I'm close. I can feel it. McFadden. And he has left one more note behind. Well, actually, he didn't... Well, I suppose he did leave it behind, but he was not the author of the note. It's downstairs in the basement. Right over here by the terminal you use for fertile soil. Note to Mac. Mac, we need you. The scorch were seen over by Tilly's farm. They're staying with us now, but it's only us and the children. All the men are in Morgantown. We haven't heard from them in weeks. You've been away so long working on those damned bots. Come home. Love, Marjorie. So as to what happened to McFadden, I couldn't really tell you, although I do know that uh, he, uh, he did leave the notes up there in 2094, and the Flatwoods had occupants until 2096, so... I don't really know exactly what happened to him or to the Agricultural Research Center. I think we can assume that he got turned into fertilizer by these robots, but other than that, I can't really say. And I've been trying to find the farm that uh, he and his wife lived on, but I haven't found it yet. Okay, so the next log is going to take us to the Overseer's Childhood Home in Sutton. Let's see if I'm being followed by anything. Apparently I am. Or at least something thinks it knows I'm out here. Let's take care of these 
bots that are out here, and maybe that'll take care of that. I'm really wishing that when you uh, activated the map, it would basically just give you a little notification saying you will not be able to fast travel. But unfortunately, it doesn't do that until you've clicked on where you want to go and then clicked to say yes, travel to this location, paying whatever fee cap or cap fee there is, uh, and then it says, oh, you can't fast travel. There's too many things nearby, but uh, or things are too nearby. I suppose would be the better way to put it. Anyway, though, I think we're probably far enough away from anything. So over to Sutton. Okay, so here we are, approaching Sutton from the south. Uh, typically when I come up here, I approach it from the north, just because that's the road I'm coming down, so I haven't actually come into this town this way before. But the uh, town is completely overrun oop, with Scorched. Uh, there's a mass suicide that took place in that church right there, although the uh, people I don't believe knew they were committing suicide. I think it was... Uh, that they were tricked. Eh, I suppose we could help out. We need experience anyway. I guess my shotgun's still broken on this character. Alright. Believe this is her home. Okay, gotta hit that radio. Alright, radio off. We'll now enter the home as though. Oh man, that's screen tearing. I'm really hoping that doesn't show up in the video, but I'm sure it will. Okay, um, so yeah, entering her home with the radio off. We got a recipe over here first. Silt bean puree. Okay. Nothing special here yet. Living room, no TV. But you know, it's one of the, you know, it's one of those things where you could say maybe it was like an intellectual family or something. They don't have a TV because they don't believe in it or something. But uh, they've got a TV stand, so. All right, so the basement is very cluttered. It's this is much more cluttered than you typically find in a uh, random house, and that's because it's not just a random house. It's the home of the overseer and her parents. Okay, so let's see if we got anything to scrap. I may as well scrap that. We don't have any ammo for it. And that 10 mil pistol as well. And, uh... I don't know if I should keep my armor or not. I'm probably going to be wearing power armor from now on, so I may as well scrap it. Especially if there's nothing really special about it, if it's just standard armor. If it was at a legendary piece or something like that, well, you can't scrap legendary, but anyway. Uh, oh, we got a plan. Oh, Tinker's Workbench already have that. Not bad scrap in here. Oop, adjustable wrench. Always go for the gears. Okay. Beginning to wonder what was worse, the screen tearing or the stuttering. Right, so we have the Overseer's parents' room here with a periodic table of the elements on the wall. Oh, cap stash. Okay. And let's see, she apparently played the accordion, she skied, played baseball, enjoyed uh, this toy alien up here, I guess. Photography, reading, had some board games. Yeah, wow, Letterman's jacket, that was quite a little thing there. Her uh, degree from diploma from uh, Vault Tech University up here. Let's see if it says if she earned it in something specific. Oh, let's see. The nuclear f nuclear fusion course. Interesting. Okay. She got a toy panda and a mug from Vault Tech University. This is interesting. The fact that there's a up-to-date vault tech calendar on the wall it almost implies that she was living here when the, the bombs were coming or at least that her parents were updating the calendar in her room right above her bed which is a little strange but anyway overseer's journal entry number two Hi, Mom. okay 
That's a little annoying. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I'm home. I'm sorry it's been so long, but I... I couldn't get away. I know neither of you is around to hear this, but I miss you. I miss watching Dad grade papers on the living room table. I miss the three of us huddled around the radio, listening to the silver shroud. Dad, you were right about what living underground would really be like. 25 years locked in with the same people was a challenge. But watching them pair up, get married, have children. Well, I think I got to know a little bit of what you and Mom were always telling me. Well, since I'm doing this whole trip down memory lane, maybe a walk over to the old high school is in order. Okay. So, we now need to go to Morgantown High School. Right on up here. Oh, fast travel. See what I mean? You can't fast travel. Enemies are nearby. Nothing's even following me at the moment, but uh, I would have to guess something in here. Just nice little up. Oh, yep. Yeah. Rad rats. What? I think there's a 95% chance that it didn't hit. I know that you got to do things a different way for a video game to where it's like real life damage doesn't actually take place because obviously if if the vault dwellers were being shot at as many times as we are then we would be dead much sooner <laughs> but the fact that I just fired a 308 round through a rat and it survived that and continued coming after me I just it boggles the mind yes I know it's leveled enemies leveled weapons and all that but it just seems a little ridiculous at times anyway Morgantown High School. Hopefully now we can fast travel. Okay. Approaching Morgantown High School from the northeast. Usually some feral ghouls are scorched outside, but I don't see anything just yet. Right here, yep. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> Feral ghouls versus scorched. Okay. Let's head on inside. something in here. I guess not. Must have just seen something that I thought was something. I thought I saw holotape. Anyway. Oops. There we go. Okay. Who else is trying to attack me right now? Seems that someone's trying to kill me. Oh. Is that it? Huh. It's another character. Alright. Uh, Overseer's log right here. I didn't want anyone around, but 
there he was. Showing up in the library after his shift with a lunchbox for us to share. Every day. When the career fair came, and I met the people from Vault Tech, it was like a light turned on. Protecting families, protecting their future, protecting America. The first thing I did when I got the acceptance letter to Vault Tech University was head over to Mom's grave with Dad. He was happy I was staying in West Virginia. So was I. All right. Now it's time for us to go to Vault Tech University, find our fourth log. Uh, I was going to try to loot some of the. Uh, cafeteria trays because they are actually TV dinner trays and they're solid aluminum but it looks like the character who we just saw probably lo looted them all herself so so we could have just fast traveled to VTU but I actually wanted to show you something else because I couldn't show you the uh, beautiful source of aluminum that typically is this school I wanted to show you a very nice source of adhesive that I found nearby uh, this is part of my whole project where I'm trying to uh, literally write down every single piece of dialogue, every single holotape, every terminal entry, every note in the game of Fallout 76 to better understand the story of Fallout 76. And in the process of doing that, I was exploring this area of northeastern Morgantown, and I found a home where it appears that the uh, owners were moving in or out. I'm assuming out because there's a massive, massive load of tape and a bunch of boxes. So let's see if we can refine that house real quick. If not, you'll get a little bit of a glimpse of northeastern Morgantown, which, uh... You'll also, there's also a hollow tape you can find out here from a uh, Vault Tech designer. Or a Vault designer who works for Vault Tech out here. I think it's actually right up here up this road. So yeah, you got... Oh, we can grab some of this food and drink here. And uh, apparently before the war they were eating tar berries. And, uh, they had bloatfly loaf recipes. A couple of old folks there, I'm assuming, from the fact that they're in rocking chairs. I think those are rocking chairs. Yeah, eh, not that you have to be old to sit in a rocking chair. I think it's just the stereotypical image, though, right? Anyway. Alright, so... Let's see. Yeah, it's up this way. Can't get into these apartments. I tried. That was something I was thinking about with, uh future content for the game, it's entirely possible that at some point in the future, if they wanted to, they could just start opening up some of these houses. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Okay. So, just to give you a little bit of a... It's straight up this road here. It's right here at this fork in the road. So, you head right up here. Alright, so, duct tape. Duct tape. Duct tape. Head out this way, and around, oh, huh, I thought there was more. Ah, yeah, right over here. <laughs> Sorry, it's multiple houses, it kind of blends together when you're typing 25,000 lines of dialogue. Anyway, uh, okay, duct tape, duct tape. Uh, let's see, where else is there some? Some of the front porch too, I think. Nope, yeah, there's some more. That's six things of it, at least. Honestly, could have sworn there was more, but hey, at least there's six, so. Let's head on over to VTU, and, uh, yeah, again, rather than fast travel, which I don't even know if I can. No, I can't. I apparently have not actually been over to VTU on this character yet. Okay. Uh, but we need the XP anyway, because that's one of the main reasons we're doing these side quests rather than the main quest is... Only level 21, and uh, the next quest takes us into the mire, which is one of the higher level areas of the game. Not as high as the Cranberry Bog, but still uh, higher than this character's level. Uh, you can actually get all the way to the top of this building, and you find something called the Roof Climber's Haiku, which... Uh, you know what? Uh, here's what I'll do. I will take you up there, and uh, if we get up there in this one, you'll see it. Otherwise, you won't, because it's a long time to get back up here. Okay. Alright, up these ladders. 
I found this in the process of exploring the city. I was trying to dis discover exactly what it is that happened in Morgantown after the war. Which, uh, there is a series of holotapes called The History of Morgantown, written by the valedictorian of the last graduating class of VTU. Okay, so get out of here, which I don't think that this would be able to support the power armor, or even just a person, but we'll pretend it can. Okay, there we go. And up. I fell off that like six times trying to get up here the first time. And here we go. So we got a cap stash. And we got this guy up here that was uh, writing and... Right, well, writing his poem here. And looking off the uh, roof with these set of binoculars. There is also a uh, bunch of uh, crates over there, but I didn't find a way to get over there. And I think that those crates are just in case someone happens to get into that area and gives, gives them a way out. But anyway. Roof Climber's Poem. Come here all day, hide from noise, watch from here, little joys. Only climbing, stealing time, hide away, no time to pray. I feel wind, I see birds, brain won't mend, just write words. Want to jump, I get scared, just sit each time. I like to rhyme. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, so, just a quick synopsis of what happened here in Morgantown after the war. I'm not going to say the whole thing, because I'll probably do a video on that at some point in the future, but... Suffice it to say that the students ended up in two armed camps fighting each other for Rataway, as apparently the area was bathed in radiation. Uh, but the valedictorian of the last graduating class and one of the other students hit out on the rooftops of their own, along with, I'm sure, some other people that just didn't happen to leave behind notes about what they were doing. And they hit up there and tried to just stay out of the way. I believe this was the uh, headquarters for the uh, street house, one of the two rival gangs that formed of the VTU alumni and students. The other gang being the uh, the Roof House. So yeah, Street House and Roof House. I believe that's the two of them. I could be mixing those up with uh, sy synonyms of street and roof, but yeah. Basically the Roof House controlled the monorail and the uh, tops of the roofs while the Street House controlled the streets. Okay, so the VTU, there are actually multiple entrances to this place. Is that barred? I guess I've never looked at this before, but yeah, that there's actual steel bars across that door. That's interesting. Anyway, we'll uh, head on inside. Actually, is there a map indicator or not? No. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Pretty dark in here. Let's see, that yeah, clock's right side up. So far, I've only found that one that's upside down. Which, having done some work with 3D modeling programs in the past, uh, well, that's just part of my daily job. I know you can sometimes get those planes matched up improperly. Oh! be honest, I'm not sure where her uh, note is in here. Could be in the uh, simulated vault overseer's quarters, so we can check that out. But first, let's see about clearing some more of these ghouls. Because we need the experience. <laughs> so we got a miner and a... Uh, Park Ranger, I'm assuming? It's just interesting, the uh, clothing that some of these ghouls are wearing. Let's see. Got a teacher's lounge here. With a beer. And some a chessboard and some burnt books. Okay. Not all that interesting. We got a teacher's office here. Dear Dean Harlan Ellison. Nuka Cherry. Oh, need to get the uh, lock picking skill up. Well, let's check out this terminal. Liam Hornwright. My understanding is that Mr. Hornwright is attending the school primarily to party and spends the majority of his time in a haze of marijuana. Hence his absurd and hastily banged out proposal. 
However, his family connections make him a potential liability, so we'll have to see how to handle his future training. H. Elliot. Yeah. Interesting to note the last name Hornwright there. Hornwright Industrial being one of the two big mining families, along with the Garahans. So it makes <laughs> that little line right there made quite a bit of sense. Drew Collingsworth. Collingsworth's the proposed experiment has evolved beyond my wildest expectations. His initial proposal mirrored other successful food replacement schemes and even showed a little imagination for once. I pushed him towards a more interesting experiment that should test the general willpower of the individuals and how they react to deaths caused by food supply. I tasted his paste. They're suitably horrible, so we're going to mass produce them and add an arterial placking agent that should cause rapid circulatory system decline. I expect a full-blown revolt within two weeks and we should be able to end the experiment with in the middle of week three. Shelby O'Rourke. O'Rourke has proven to be persistent enough to convince me to grant her a small amount of funding for her thesis project to provide evidence of so-called cryptids. Should she prove the existence and have appropriate data, this would be a major breakthrough that Vault Tech can surely benefit from. If anything, it gets us out of hair, that's odd, for a few months. Should she not return within her given time period, we'll need to find a team to locate wherever she's holed up and retrieve any data for investigation. That gives us a miscellaneous quest to find Shelby O'Rourke's shack. Now, normally I would always uh, lock, use the lockpick, but because we can't, we may as well see what we can get out of this stim pack. And that's okay. Yeah, I don't really need any, any of the rest of the stuff, so... Uh, but let's also let's see if I can just get it off the map real quick. Yep, there it is. Okay, so... Anything else up here to check out? We got some other rooms. We got uh, Professor M. Blake, the Professor of Anthropology. Which uh, is interesting to note because uh, Dasa Ben Ami was supposed to be in the Anthropology School and was printing her thesis when the bombs were falling. So, of course, syllabus template. Well, I would read that, but there's no real reason to because it's literally just a template. Okay. Notes to self Horse Creek Petroglyphs. Had a chance to go study the Horse Creek petroglyphs in person. I've been meaning to do so ever since moving to West Virginia. They've always fascinated me. The idea that Europeans landed in North America and traveled that far inland during the 6th or 7th century is fascinating. Now whether it was written in Old Irish Ogham, Basque, or some other ancient language is up for debate. Personally, I prefer the Basque translation as it paints a vivid picture of the Great Bison Hunt. But regardless, it's exciting to study and theorize about the petroglyphs in our own backyard. Jacqueline. Jacqueline brought more of her notes around the other day. Still not sure what to make of those runes. They don't match any of the native petroglyphs in the area, nor do they match any of old European runes I would expect. It. Still, I'm confident I'll be able to find a match somewhere. And if not, there may be enough to go on to piece together a rough idea of what they say, if anything. I'm beginning to think it may be nonsense, but I'm intrigued. BTU. Ever since Fault Tech bought out the university, they've been shifting focus away from classic education more towards specialized classes. I've seen several other professors get the boot, but thankfully I seem to have been spared thus far. I should feel lucky they believe language is still worth preserving in the event of society collapses and we all need to move underground. Guidestone Translation Jacqueline has instructed me that she would feel safer if I move the translation key offline. The woman is paranoid, but I don't disagree that it's for good reason. It is because of this that she insists on keeping the original notes with her. She says it's for the best, just in case someone gets to one of us. So none of us have all the pieces. Even Agent Wilson's taking precautions. We could be onto something big here. Then again, I still maintain the runes are simply ancient petroglyphs left by indigenous peoples of the region. Jacqueline believes they may be extraterrestrial in nature, but I'll stick with Occam on this one. The hypothesis with the fewest assumptions is often the correct one. Really want to look into that, but anyway. Let's see what else there is here at VTU while we're here. Anything else on this floor? We can check out this filing cabinet for a table knife, because where else do you keep them, right? Nothing in that. Again, who keeps this stuff in cabinets? I suppose if uh, you eat lunch at work, and you need to store those things somewhere. Got a bathroom here. Okay. Anything in here? Well, that is a high sink. That has got to violate the ADA. Of course, I sincerely doubt the Fallout universe has an ADA. Okay. We got some uh, more 
of the uh, of the election posters over here. Let's see, office desk fan. All right. Oh, here we go. A little. What did I think? Computer lab. I should have read this thing before coming in. Yes, computer lab. Okay. Liam Hornwright's workstation. The slacker. Abstract. An experiment for determining the ability of canines to form a self-governing society. Basically, the experiment would involve a group of dogs trained to train other dogs to perform typical human-run tasks. I've begun training my miniature Schnauzer Riley to start operating vault doors, which I think is a promising start to the experiment. I'd be happy to bring her in at any time to demonstrate. Advisor response. Mr. Matthews. This proposal lacks any kind of substantial value and makes me seriously question your devotion to the project or the preservation of the human race. Please see me and we can talk about a serious proposal if you can manage to find my office. Best, Dean Harland Elliott, President Overseer Training Advisory Board. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is a ridiculous <laughs> proposal. Okay, what do we got here? Drew Collingsworth Workstation. Abstract. An experiment for determining the optimal density of calories in a foodstuff versus storage space. This experiment will test the tolerance of various individuals' ability to consume food of unvarying texture but allow them to design flavors or use pre-created flavors. In this experiment, there will be a control group that uses a standard regimen of vault supplies and an experimental group that subsists on nothing but my proprietary food paste formula. See attached materials. Proprietary food paste formulation. So we got... Uh, Dried yellow peas, garbanzo beans, pea protein, dried egg product, canola oil, whole ground flaxseed, ground miscanthus grass, pea starch, olive oil, choline chloride, coconut oil, fiber, fish oil, insulin, salt, zinc sulfate, vitamin E supplement, iron amino acid chelate, ferrous sulfate, niacin supplement, manganese amino acid chelate, Vitamin A supplement, thiamine mononitrate, vitamin B12 supplement, vitamin D3 supplement, calcium iodate, dried lycobacillus acidophilus fermentation product. Okay, sounds tasty, huh? Proposed flavor profiles. Below are a list of potential flavor profiles and components that dwellers can use to create new meals. Base flavoring, sweeteners, sucralose, dulcin, sorbitol, xylitol, alatame. Bittering agents, ground ivy, bog myrtle, marigold, root. Souring agent, vinegar, katri, anardana, kokum. Salts, no salt will be provided as it is part of the base paste. Texturing, all preparations will have the same texture. Spicing, capsaicin, deflavored chilies, ethyl acetate, CAS 10057. Okay, advisor response. Mr. Collingsworth, your proposal has come a long way and the board has agreed to give you one month of vault time starting October 15th of this year. We will accelerate your leadership classes and pull you from unrelated or less important classes. Congratulations, Dean Harland Elliott, President, Overseer Training Advisory Board. Alright, let's see if there's any more proposals in here. Nothing there. Someone was uh, apparently having a bad day from that bottle of wine. And okay, uh, nothing else it seems in here. Okay, let's see if there's anything else up here. Doesn't look like there is, so let's check out the downstairs and then we will go into the, uh, whoa, that's, that needs to get fixed. A little nice graphical glitch right there. Anyway, let's go check out the uh, experimental vault after we finish up down here. <laughs> that almost looked like a door for a minute. Uh, okay, medical emergency care. So this is a classroom, obviously. Let's see what we got here. Medical training development journal. Introduction. A vault overseer is responsible for taking on many roles. Administrator, adjudicator, spiritual leader, and sometimes doctor. This course is specifically focused on the latter, teaching students how to diagnose and treat most medical emergencies. This is a highly intensive course. Completion of the vault health and well-being course syllabus is required. BTU VMT 101 Introduction to Medical Diagnoses The first step in tackling a medical issue is through proper diagnosis. This course will instruct students on how to use a vault's medical equipment and facilities to identify and categorize medical issues. This intensive three-month course culminates in a week-long residency at AVR Medical Center in Appalachia. In Appalachia, it's in Charleston, just drive it down the road. Anyway, where you will assist actual doctors in their diagnoses of emergency room patients. VTU VMT 201 Skin Disorders in You 
Is it acne or is it a flesh-eating bacterium? There are literally thousands of potential issues that can affect the skin of the typical vault dweller. This course will teach proper identification techniques and suggested treatments of skin disorders. The course's final exam will involve a blindfolded touch and taste test. Since it's highly possible an overseer may have to diagnose and administer these treatments in the dark. Ooh. VTU VMT 290. Limb replacements. A primer. Did you know that the second most likely medical hazard in a vault involves the total loss of a dweller's limb? This course will instruct students on how to properly reattach severed limbs, as well as how to create substitute limbs from household items. We'll also be teaching students advanced techniques such as substituting arms in place of legs, limb donation, screening, and experimental lab-grown limb technology. VTU VMT 402 Advanced Surgical Techniques this course will fully certify students to perform complex surgical procedures such as organ transplants, tumor removal, and mutation extractions. Normally, studying to be a surgical doctor can take as long as 8 to 10 years. Using vault Tech's patented Speed Teach trademarked system will reduce the study time to only three, three months. Important, registering for this course requires students to purchase a vault Tech Malpractice Protection Certificate. Form VTMPC 450712-45C-8 which is available in the bursar's office. Yeah, uh, no kidding, they'll need some malpractice protection certificates for a three-month course to teach you what you need to learn in eight to ten years. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that vault Tech really had uh, any business being in medical school with that. Uh, let's see. So that hallway's blocked up. That leads out into the courtyard. And we got uh, technical facilities training. Uh, ceiling is collapsed in here. Let's see if there's anything in here. Nope, nothing in either of those cabinets. Those terminals are destroyed on the ground. Oh, that takes us right back up into the archives of above, so nothing else to find in here. Okay. And we got one more door here at the end of the hall. Young Dweller Development. Let's see. Clothing, iron, and pre-war money. Okay, so we got uh, Giddy Up Buttercup here. Got a bunch of blocks. Okay, looks like a little classroom. Let's check this out. Young Dweller Development Terminal. Introduction. One of the duties of a vault overseer may involve becoming a surrogate parent or dispensing advice to actual parents of young dwellers. Through this series of courses, Vault Tech will instruct you on how to deal with one of the most difficult classifications of children, the preteens, 10 to 12 years of age. If you have any questions about the entries in this syllabus, please speak to a Vault Tech View Diversity representative. VTU PDM 101. Introduction to Preteen Dweller Maintenance. This course is designed to introduce the mechanics of preteen physiology. The focus will be primarily on regarding maintenance and upkeep, including things that can go wrong in the preteen's body. Students will be instructed on how to repair common issues and deal with physiological emergencies. Please note that this course involves laboratory dissection work, so the proper biohazard equipment will be issued after registration is completed. What kind of dissection work is taking place in a preteen dweller maintenance course? I got a feeling I don't want to know. VTU PDM 201. Introduction to Preteen Psychology. Preteens feature the most complex psychology of any age group. This course will equip the vault overseer with the proper armaments to handle an array of preteen psychological issues that may arise within their vaults. Learn how to cope with such issues as preteen angst, tantrums, outright defiance, whining, laziness, and self-motivation. This course will also instruct the vault overseer on how to draw up behavioral contracts for VTBC 0987891A backslash 7 and define consequences for preteens who breach outlined obligations. VTU PDM 222 Many young vault dwellers will reach the puberty stage in their preteen years. This course will enable the vault overseer to understand the changes that are occurring in these budding youths and become their mentor if necessary. Explanation of physical and psychosocial behavioral changes is covered in the course as well as how to explain these changes to preteen dwellers in a way they'll understand. Also included will be how to properly administer and explain the Voltec Puberty Welcome Kit, or VTPWK, which that just rolls off the tongue, right? Which should be presented to all preteen dwellers once they've achieved this growth milestone. VTU PDM 401. Preteens in the workforce. Although a preteen can range from 10 to 13 years in age, they certainly qualify for a variety of jobs in the average vault. 
This course is specifically designed to explain the difficulties of various tasks and which ones are optimal for the pre-tween dweller. The course also deals with occupational safety considerations when assigning pre-teens to tasks involving nuclear, biological, or chemical environments. Because that's where you want pre-teens. By the way, pre-tween... Pre-teen dweller is not something that's fun to say many times. Oh, I'm dying of dehydration. Let's see... Okay, and after eating those eight cans of dog food, I'm getting a little bit hungry, you know? Okay, oh, yes. So, experimental vault. So we got, uh, what I'm assuming are blood stains on the floor, although they could just be... Yeah, I don't know what else they would be. Maybe rust spots or something. See... One thing that I have a little bit of a beef with with Bethesda is they always kind of just like throw rubble into environments and just the question is, where did this come from? I mean, I'm looking around here, I don't see holes in the ceiling and there's like bricks in this and stuff like that and chunks of metal and like a gas tank. Where did this stuff all come from? But anyway, adhesive in the form of vegetable starch. Let's, oh, and uh, no, I thought I saw a desk fan, but I guess not. Okay, let's head on in. Down we go. And here are some folks that we're trying to get out. Let's see if there's any signs that no, no real signs of that on this side of the door, but other than, you know, them having a fire extinguisher here. And you got these uh, four folks that look like they're trying to break down this door with these folding chairs, which when you look it says, warning, hydraulic hatched 3,300 pounds of pressure. You have to think these folding chairs aren't going to get through, nor is that broom, but... And they would know that. I guess they were just desperate. But Imagine how desperate you'd have to be to try to use those things to get through that door. Uh, but anyway. Can we open this? Yes. Okay. So. And. Looks like somebody committed suicide with rat poisoning. My guess would be that uh, this is Drew Collingsworth. The guy who designed the experiment that was that was running at the time that the, uh, the world ended. See, silver pocket watch, we can take that. It's got screws in it. Okay, we got Overseer's Log. Wow, a lot of entries here. Okay, October 15th of 2077. T minus one day until my test run starts. I did the final walkthrough with my advisors before getting locked in. The students will be here tomorrow to test my hypothesis that using calorically dense food paste of my own formulation is superior to standard supplies, and that my flavoring system will create a, enough variety so that dwellers won't get bored. October 16th. My dwellers have arrived. After a brief orientation, I've given them time to adjust to one another, the parameters of the experiment, and their respective roles. I plan on giving an address later today. October 17th of 2077. We are on full lockdown, and everything is running smoothly. Unless I signal to my advisors, we're in this until the time locks were released four weeks from now. So far, the tests have been going well, and the feedback has been positive about on the food paste formulation. October 19th of 2077. The dwellers are eating even less of the experimental formulation than I expected. They report full bellies and satisfactory metabolisms. October 23rd of 2077. It felt like something happened on the outside today, almost like an earthquake. We lost power in the vault temporarily. The dwellers were able to quickly restore power via backup generators. I assume that this is part of the drill, and my people performed admirably. Of course, that was the bombs. October 26th of 2077. A heart attack. Sudden and out of nowhere. One of the maintenance staff died in the middle of his workday. I'm awaiting the coroner's report before I make any decisions. October 27th of 2077. The coroner did a full autopsy. It looks like it wasn't a heart attack, but the arterial walls of the heart hardened and cracked. I've ordered a medical review of the control group and members of the test group. October 28th of 2077. It's conclusive. My food paste formulation causes arterial plaque buildup. There were no signs of buildup in the control group, so I've ordered the dwellers to take stock of the remaining standard issue food to see if we have another week left in us. October 29th of 2077. More bad news. My food paste was not as popular as I thought. Apparently a black market for standard rations cropped up and we only have two days left for everyone in the vault. I want to try to figure out a solution to this problem before I signal my advisors to end the test prematurely. This is my senior thesis experiment and if I fail I won't be able to operate as a full overseer. October 31st, 2077. 
The dwellers are threatening to revolt if I don't call the experiment. They burned through the rations quicker than we thought and now are getting scared. I'm going to signal my advisors to cancel the test. We, I can't take the chance that we're going to lose anyone else. November 1st of 2077. No response from the outside. The dwellers think that I'm lying to them and are threatening to storm my office. I'm not sure if I can hold off the full offensive for two full weeks. November 2nd, 2077. They breached the outer seal and are at the door to my office. I can hear the drill operating. It'll take them days to get through, but I can't take the chance. I don't know why my advisors aren't responding. People are dying here and more are going to die. And there's nothing I can do about it. This will be my final entry before I barricade myself in my bedroom in the hopes that I can outlast the time blocks. God willing, this is just part of the test. Something tells me it's not. Ooh. This is a tough way to go. Now... Uh, ooh, crystal. Um, if you noticed right there, basically he seemed to be completely unaware of the fact that his overseer, Dean Harland, had actually uh, put those arterial uh, coagulating substances into the uh, formulation. Previous simulation status. Result failure. Total loss of life. Simulating Simulation vault current status. The vault has been cleaned by automated systems and is ready for the next simulation. I don't think those automated systems did a very good job. Upcoming simulation status. No plans available. System awaiting setup instructions. Security door control. Let's open it. Okay. There we go. Now we can head further in. You know, it's one thing to have vault tech do the things they did after the apocalypse so the fact that they were doing it even before killing people with these uh knowingly harmful substances is really quite disturbing what they thought they could get away with unfortunately you can't pick up that uh nope oh, sugar bombs can't pick up that jumpsuit so we got a pool table here we got multiple quarters okay not sure why there's a rib cage and spine in there, but whatever. I really kind of wish that Bethesda would do an overhaul of the way the uh, randomized loot spawns so that it would make a little bit more sense for the situation. Stone pack. Oh, that was a very nice cooler. Anything else in here? So this must have been where that autopsy was performed. I mean, given that it's a medical center. I, uh don't really see it being the case that they would have a mortuary along with a uh, medical bay. Can't open that safe unfortunately. Ooh, uh, let's take that microscope. Alright, and a classroom. This would imply to me that they also had uh, younger people in the vault, or at least I w you know, it's not necessarily the case that they would have younger people in the vault for every simulation. It could very well be that this was for specific simulations and that the vault was uh, equipped to handle um, you know a number of tasks All right, let's check out downstairs so we got a diner here okay we got a recipe here for tasty red scorpion egg omelet again randomized loot why <laughs> I guess people could have come in here after the fact and dropped this, but it's just strange. So, only plastic trays here, unfortunately. No TV dinner trays. Okay. Anything else over there? No, it doesn't seem to be. Oh, maintenance. Can we get in there? Nope. Nope. Okay, so we got a uh, workout area. Jukebox. Okay, and it looks like uh, communal showers in here. Oh, anything in here? Yes. Okay. And what about this one? There we go. Okay. Heading back upstairs, we got two ways we can go. Actually, we just came from the overseer's office. Didn't we? Yeah, we did. So we get, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I got a little turned around there. Uh, I was assuming that I could go 
through uh, one in like through a small door and a large door but it's actually just two large doors so I can either go that way towards screening or we can head this way because we actually did go through those two doors but we haven't been up this way yet so let's check this out okay odd little locker room here giddy up buttercup body Okay, what about this door here? Where does this go? Okay. Ah, we got the uh, generator room here. Let's see. Simulation vault entrance. Is there anything? No, that looks about the same. Nothing to read there. What about in here? Nope. Don't need the ball peen hammers. I don't need steel or wood at the moment. I wonder if these generators are still uh, functional. If you could get them up and running and like have like a an outpost sort of a thing in VTU. Alright, we got a terminal here, power terminal. Alright, maintenance logs. Data corrupted. I do wish Bethesda would have fewer terminals that say data corrupted. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Let's see. Doesn't look like there's anything over there, so why don't we just head through the one door that does actually. Oh. That's interesting. Okay, well. I want to check out the screening area first. Got a fuel canister there. Combination wrench. Oh, that's. I need adjustable wrench, not combination. But combination does have lead, which helps you make bullets, so not the worst thing in the world. I've got two characters that are always completely out of ammunition. Basically, I'll get like 70 rounds, and you'd think that's a lot. Well, if you play this game, you know that's not a lot. But you'd have like 70 rounds, and that's like two super mutants with constant headshots. Okay, screening. So we got two ways to go here. Nope, just one way to go. Let's check these lockers. Okay, nothing really all that useful in there. Got uh, another room with showers in it. I guess this is for when you first enter and you're trying to get the radiation off. Or radioactive materials, I mean. Head on up this way. Okay. So, yeah, it's another simulation vault entrance. Oh, yeah, nothing. No way to get through there. And this also, I believe, goes right up back up into the university. So yeah, we got more dead bodies over here. Well, skeletons. See, it says vault simulation in process on there, but when you get on the computers, it says that the previous one was a failure, which would make you think that those things would say would not say that it's in process progress. Um, so yeah, that's an exit door. So let's head back this way back through the power room, and I'll bring you back when we get there so you don't have to just watch me go through this whole area again. Okay, here we are. Heading back out into the university. Uh, that vault actually works as a tunnel going under the ground to come out into this other area. Okay, so yeah, I see the log up there, but why don't we just check out this area first. Facilities management. Let's see, we got, uh... Oh, we got some actual workbenches in here. Some scrap we could use. Automated research terminal. All holotape programs must be approved by a faculty advisor. No gaming on this terminal at any times. Enter product passcode to proceed. Archive logs. Can't get into that. Or previous program results. Can't get into that. Okay. Let's see. Anything over here? No. All right. I don't think I actually have anything to scrap right now, so we may as well just ignore that. Because I'm not even wearing armor anymore, so those uh, workstations are a little useless to me at the moment. Let's see. Physical activity lab. Okay. Physical health development terminal. VTU HWB 101. 
Introduction to Dweller Health. This course is designed to introduce the physical aspects of Vault Dweller Health and Survival. The Vault Overseer will learn what makes their dwellers tick, what can potentially go wrong, and how to implement health and well-being solutions. As a bonus, you'll spend a weekend in one of our test vaults and experience the effects that recirculated air, recirculated water, and mild doses of radiation can have on the human body. BTU HWB 201 Introduction to Contaminants the average vault contains approximately 673 possible contaminants. This course will introduce the vault overseer to what we refer to as the TTC list, or Top 10 Contaminants list. We'll cover the sources of these contaminants, their effects on the human body, and how to treat health issues that will arise from exposure. Finally, if your vault has been certified as an observation vault, the course will also cover how to introduce these contaminants at low enough levels to gather proper data points without long-term harmful effects. There's the vault tech we all know and love. VTU HWB 304. All vaults are designed to be completely self-reliant and are equipped with the proper amount of food and water before they are sealed. In the unlikely event that one of these systems fails, or if said supplies are improperly distributed or lost, the vault overseer will have to implement organic recycling procedures. <laughs> yeah, if they are improperly distributed or lost. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the course will cover and use maintenance of the vault's waste recycling systems and how to properly administer food and drink. The highlight of this course is a week-long waste sprint where students are forced to survive using our sample recycling systems in their own waste. PTU HWB 410 Survival Through Cannibalism this is an advanced study course that deals with the possibility that a vault can reach LAFFS status, lack of all food and food life sources. When food supplies are completely exhausted and the vault's recycling systems are offline, vault Tech has given all overseers permission to use uh, any means necessary to ensure dweller survival. To achieve this goal, cannibalism may become necessary. This course will cover all aspects of cannibalism, including moral ramifications, corpse consumption, safety, and how to... Make delicious side dishes using only hair and toenails. Wow. I think they did a little too much research on cannibalism. Let's see. Oh, this is kind of fun. Uh, if you played Fallout 4 and got their uh, vault Tech DLC, I can't remember what it's called offhand. You get the, to build a vault with Power Cycle 1000s. So you get to uh, install this drinking system, which in this case, for some reason, has no texture for the glass walls of that little thing there. So yeah, I'm not really sure what that's all about. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Okay, sleep and housing lab. So, nothing really but beds, couches. We got some file cabinets. Silver pocket watch. Ooh, buff tats. Yeah, let's take them. And anything else. That seems to have been about it in there. Was that? No, that was not the right direction. Was it? Uh, yes, it was. Because I guess I went down the right side of the hallway there. No, I just missed that completely somehow. Anyway. Okay, back here in this main area where we got a big old fake vault door. And we got the uh, vault boy and vault girl. Let's head upstairs. And we got the overseer's log. Overseer's personal journal. Four years of living, learning, and breathing vault tech. Graduating with honors in the overseer track. Dad was so proud. He came out even though he was already so sick. I must have impressed the right people because I was offered the next available overseer slot. I had just graduated. It was supposed to take years. Maybe they knew the war was inevitable. When I learned that 76 was going to be built, I was so excited I jumped right out of my chair and did a little dance around the living room. Appalachia would be safe, no matter what happened. Evan chose that moment to propose, a mughead. He knew I wouldn't say no after hearing the news. He knew me better than anyone. Dad died a few months after Evan and I moved in together. He really wanted to walk me down the aisle. Well, I didn't really get to walk down there either, so... Uh, 
I think it's time I went home. I owe Evan that much. Okay. So, it seems that there was actually no one living in the uh, Overseer's parents' house by the time the bombs fell. Let's see if there's any actual indication as to where this next one takes us, because I've honestly forgotten. So, let's see. Welch. Ah, that is a uh, very, very devastated town. And that's going to do it for this video, though, because uh, we've actually done quite a bit here. We've found the first four logs. We checked out the Vault Tech Agricultural Research Center. We went to Sutton to her home, to her childhood home, to the Morgantown High School, where she went to high school, VTU, where she went to university, and learned about her family and about her fiancé. So... This has been the Resident Cartographer. If you want to see more videos in this series, then hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button if you want to be notified if they're when they become available. Hit the like button if you liked it. Leave me a comment or question, I'll try to get back to you. And I uh, just hope to see everybody again next time. Thanks for watching.